Why, hello there, everybody. It is I, Super Paul Games, and welcome to a brand new visual novel, at least brand new to me, called Out of Sight. It's by the same person who did Summer Found Me. If you haven't seen that, that is an awesome visual novel. I did a Let's Play of it. It's somewhere on one of my channels, I'm sure. I had a great time with it, so I thought, let's play another game by her. I'm good at words. The main character, I believe, is the lady. I will read her internal monologue like this in my normal voice. And then, because if I do it in my crappy girl voice, it's going to take away the power. At some point in your life, something strange has happened to you. The same is true for all of us. Every day something bizarre happens to someone. In that case, can it really be considered bizarre? What's ordinary out of the ordinary? That light in the corner of your eye? That creaking sound late at night? Hopefully that's not the neighbors doing the... That door you thought you closed? Did, was there a door closing sound in there? I'm all glib and like, ho, 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 sex joke, and I'm like, oh my god, is there a door closing? Is there a ghost here? What's going on? In the end, it's all up to you how you see it or how you don't. Foreshadowing. I'm riding a bus, motherfucker. It was a lazy, warm spring morning. Get a job, lazy, warm spring morning. Then it'd be a hard work in spring morning. On one of the rare occasions, I woke up before noon on a Sunday. Hey, this character's like me. With my favorite book nestled behind a light blanket and some snacks inside my bag, I stepped out of the bus. Is it Alice in Wonderland or Huckleberry Finn? Well, I love this art style. It must have been around 10 in the morning and the park entrance was bustling. I love bustles. Children running around, Hi, I'm having fun, Daddy! Chasing each other around, Ah, oh, I fell, ah! Oh, stupid kids crying. Parents with strollers. I would like to imagine parents pushing other parents in strollers. Adult strollers would be awesome. Couples cuddling on benches? Damn you, why do you have love of imaginary couples that I don't? Living in a world of their own, a group of older gentlemen gathered around two chess players. A gentle breeze <sighs> ruffled my hair as a welcome. Today was going to be great! I would finally finish my book. But first, I had to find a nice place by the lake, away from the general public. I'd only been to this particular park a couple of times before, so it took a while to find it. Somewhere in there, I bet there's someone working on a Sunday like, I hate my job. Finally, I spotted the perfect place and made my way to it. It was, a qui it was quieter here as it was in the farthest corner of the park. I took out my blanket and lay it on the warming earth, half hidden in shadow by a nearby willow tree. I wanted to read by book and also tan my legs while I was at it. I admired my handiwork for a moment before digging out a packet of chocolate chip cookies in my book. This game's got everything! It's got cookies! What more can you want? I want cookies right now. So I only have about a hundred pages left. I looked around, almost no one in sight. A couple in a boat far away. A few people barely visible through the trees that separated the place from the nearby path. That actually is a favorite of mine. Not when she's reading by the lake, but when you go to the park and you have a section of it all to yourself. Or when you go to the movie theaters and it's the same way. A guy who seemed to be resting underneath a tree at a respectable distance from me. I made myself comfortable, oh, feeling better, and opened the book, setting aside the bookmark. It was called Darkness by the Lake, and it told the story of a young man who became blind at a young age, showing his struggles growing up. He often went to a lake near his hometown to gather his thoughts and find peace. He met a girl there. Ooh. I'm going to tell you a little side story, sorry for interrupting this. I remember the last time I went to Canada, it was to go, I was kind of going on a date, there was a girl there I was dating. And the Border Patrol was a nice Canadian guy, and he's like, uh, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going here. And he's like, who are you going to meet? And I said the name, and he's like, oh, you're going to meet a girl, eh? Like, with some kind of scandalous thing. Yes, I might look at her boobs. Throughout the book, they develop the relationship and grow, sometimes together, sometimes apart. The apart part's sad. I was curious to see if they end up together. I stayed up until three last night reading. Sleep finally got the better of me, so I decided to finish the book today by the lake. I continued from where I'd left off the night before. Both minutes and pages flew by as I anxiously inched closer to the final chapter. I imagined pages flying by like she's ripping them out. I love this one! Time seemed to be slowing down, matching the atmosphere of the book. As I turned the very last page, the two characters reunited on the shores of, shores of Lake Emerald. Are you scared? She asked when there was nothing else to say. Nah, I, I can't wait for the bandages to come off. He replied, I want to see the lake again, the sky, my parents. You. What if you don't like me? 
Uh, you're already the most beautiful woman in the world to me. His honest answer left her speechless again. Being able to see won't change who I am. I still won't be able to tell if your purse matches your outfit. She laughed. <laughs> Rested her head on his shoulder and took in the sights they would soon be sharing. I hope the lake will be this shade of green again tomorrow. And that was the end. That was what? Bullshit! I go bullshit! You know, in real life, he's gonna pull off the bandages and be like, Whoa, you're ugly. I want someone better. I'm not changing about life. That was a very unrealistic happy ending. Just as expected, another unrealistic happy ending. Things never happen like that in real life. I've been feeling down lately, and this didn't help much. With its sappy romance and open-endedness, perhaps the main character died on the operating table, but no one will ever know. The sun had mellowed me out completely. Finally putting darkness by the lake to rest, I scooted down on the blanket, took off my glasses, and using my bag as a pillow, I shut my eyes. <sighs> so this is what it would be like not to be able to see. Oh, put my glasses back on, please. I knew the feeling well enough, being so nearsighted I was practically blind without my glasses. I remember once when I was much younger, I was at school during PE. I mean PE, physical education, not during PE. I like there how there are two um, periods. The reason I point that out is that's the way I would punctuate it, because I'd be like, PE is an abbreviation, they both have their own periods and we need another period for the end of the sentence. Out of nowhere, a ball came flying towards my face. Oh, so many balls in my face. It's all happening again. As I was warming up on the sidelines, my face was pretty beat up, but I only cared about my broken glasses. I was unable to see, and I felt helpless for the rest of the day. Shitty school memories. I sat quietly in my seat, touching the rims of my now glasses, pair, glassless pair of glasses. I couldn't participate in any activity. That's kind of good. You could be like, I can't do math, teacher. I can't see. I couldn't have a conversation without feeling lost as to where I was supposed to look. It was awful. It took three days to get a new pair. Wow, your parents really got on that for you. From that day on, I made sure I had a spare at home for emergencies, and I took extra care with the pair I was wearing. With my eyes closed, I touched the glasses which I'd laid on top of the finished novel. So strange to depend on this little piece of metal and plastic, my thoughts drifted back to the events of the book. Drawing parallels to my own life and considering myself lucky that at least I could see. Isn't that a little rude? You, character in the book, I'm better than you! I can see! Even if I do need a little bit of help from two little lenses, lost in thought, the warm of the sun and gentle breeze had lulled me to sleep. Sleep got you again, Mr. Sandman's like, oh, you will be mine! Oh, I woke up sometime later feeling strangely relaxed. I stretched and rubbed my eyes before reaching for my glasses. If it was me, I would have farted and woken up. It's kind of a thing I do that everybody would have stared. I would have been embarrassed. Why am I talking about this? Abort, Paul! Abort! My fingers felt around the cover of the book. Gently at first, then a little more urgently. Where are my glasses? Uh, where'd my glasses gone? I brought my face close to the place. I knew I'd left them. Nothing! Without any sudden movements, as not to crush them, I started feeling around for my glasses. Five minutes later, I was still blind and a lo at a loss. Where had they gone? Who could have taken them? Glasses thieves. Um, I'm going to keep searching. I remembered an old trick I'd read somewhere. Nearsighted people could use their phone to find the glasses. How does that? How does how does that work? I opened up my camera application on my phone and stared at the screen as I scanned the area. Nothing. Oh, I, I guess you're using it to zoom in. There was no one around either. I had to somehow find my way home without being able to see. Worst case scenario, I'd have to call someone to pick me up. How? How are you gonna? Oh, I, I guess you have your phone. Well, I, that's not so bad then. A little embarrassing. I was thinking worst case scenario, if someone grabs you and makes you a prostitute for them in Taiwan. I've never been to Taiwan. Maybe it's really nice. That's what the strange man with the, the long coat keeps telling me when he tries to get me into his vehicle. But first I had to really make sure there was no way of getting my glasses back. Those things are pretty expensive. Sexy specs, why must you cost so much? I wasn't the type to go down without a fight. I started to pack everything carefully. As I was folding the blanket, I felt like someone was watching me. Instinctively, I looked behind. Someone was behind me. I couldn't tell who it was, but I was fairly sure it was a man. It could be a girl. That haircut's pretty androgynous. I believe this is us, Lena. Yes? 
His silence was weirding me out! Perhaps he was just walking past and I assumed he wanted to speak to me. How embarrassing! Uh, I'm sorry, can I help you? Uh, are, are, are you talking to me? Uh, yes. He seemed not to be able to find his words. Maybe he lost them like I lost my glasses. Maybe they don't understand literary devices. Uh, you were searching for something and I, uh, I just... Oh yes, I fell asleep and now I can't find my glasses. I tried looking for them and nothing. Kind of funny because I can't see, but looking. Did you by any chance see someone walk by? Glasses thieves? No. Oh, I guess I'm not going to find them. Uh, was anything stolen? Nothing except my glasses. Unfortunately, my eyesight's really bad. Your asses? I said glasses. Uh, I don't see them around here anywhere. I'm sorry. He moved around, looking through the grass, near the bushes, through my bushes, and trees, and even by the lake shore. Uh, I, I really wished I could say I found them. Sorry. I, I put them right next to me. If I had crushed them in my sleep, I should have at least found the pieces. Oh my god, that would be horrible to wake up that way. Uh, why am I bleeding and why is there glass in me? It's like a Sunday night. That's, no, that's true. Anyway, I thank you. I guess I gotta go home. The guy was standing there, so I started to walk away. Then I realized I had no idea where I was exactly. I had wandered about searching for the perfect spot, but I couldn't remember which direction I had come from. Hey, this might be a weird thing to ask, but do you think, do you think you could show me the way to the park entrance? I'm a bit lost and I can barely see anything. Oh uh, yeah, sure, why not? I got bit, no, nothing. I don't really have anything better to do. I don't have any plans. Thanks so much. What a nice person. I gathered my things while the guy waited. He didn't say a single thing. It's hard to tell. Are you peeking at my booty? Are you being polite? Oh, I should have worked it out more so my booty was bootylicious. But I felt as if he was watching me. And I accidentally hit right click to ruin the mood. <laughs> Ready to go. Thanks again for helping me. I'm Lena, by the way. Or is it Lina? Oh, crap. I don't know words. All right. Oh, my God. Your name is amazing. Dude. Dude, did you know... Did you know you have a constellation in the sky? Did you know you're like a Greek? They, the Greeks wrote history stories about you that might have been made up? Dude, you're famous. Orion, is that a nickname? Uh, no, 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 that's what I'm called. It's, it's my name. It's called a name. Oh, that's a pretty cool name. Of course it is. It's badass. We walk towards the entrance. I'm, I'm kind of blushing here. He's super badass. I followed where Orion led, and he seemed to be looking at me often. I've seen you in the night sky. Why did I do it again? I got button happy. I'm like, oh, Orion, I don't know what button to press. After watching me for Orion a while, Orion finally decided to say what he was thinking. Uh, your eyes are just moving around. You're not really focusing on anything. It's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, my disability is really funny, Orion. Um, Thanks a lot. I wasn't self-conscious enough already, cosmic douche. Ah, see, cosmic constellation. Yeah, what I... So, uh, what do you think of dying? Whoa! Orion, you are great at opening conversations. You're actually a lot like me. Uh, dying? W what's this all of a sudden? I hope he doesn't stab us now. I was just curious. I'm always curious what people have to say about that. Oh, please don't be a murderer. You seem like such a nice guy. Well, dying is a part of living. And it happens at some point, And that's that. It doesn't help to dwell on it. Uh, what do you think happens after you die? I think, uh, worms, they crawl up your nose and they eat your brains. I guess I'll find out when I get there. Uh, so you don't think about it? Nah, not really. I used to when I was younger. Uh, you must have been a fun kid then. <sighs> Alright. You don't think I told anyone, do you? You don't make friends at 11 talking about death. Uh, what's the point of having friends if you can't be honest with them? No offense, but what's with all these weird questions? I don't want to waste time talking about the weather. I like weird. Can you give me that? Can you give me the weird? I just want the weird, baby. Just give it to me. Oh, hey, Ryan. I might give you more than you can handle, mister. What? Are we flirting? I'm not bad at flirting. I don't know, honestly. But today's not a good day for me. I don't know. If I'm all Ryan, I'm like, this is the time I want you to see me naked. It's going to be a blur, so you might think it looks okay. <laughs> We're almost at the gate now. I start rummaging through my bag for my wallet. Oh no. What? My wallet, I forgot it at home. I can't take a taxi. I have to take the bus. I'll walk you. Orion, you're a really nice guy. 
No, no, it's fine. You don't have to do that. Nah, not like I have anything better to do. I'll walk you home in return for getting to ask you all the questions I want. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm a worst case scenario guy. I automatically go to the worst case scenario because I'm afraid the first thing he's gonna ask us is sex questions or about my underwear. And yes, I'm wearing underwear. Thank you, Orion. Yeah, why not? We're an adventure adventurous person. It seems like an interesting way to pass the time talking to Orion. And I wasn't planning on taking him home or anything. I guess you can walk me home. Ah, uh, that was easy. Did you just call me easy, Orion? I am not easy. I am not a whore. I am very upstanding and difficult. You are cute, though, for a giant blur. I was hoping you put up a fight. Oh, I don't want to fight you. I had a bunch of arguments ready to go and everything. It was my pleasure to spoil your fun. Ah, it's a win-win for me either way. I could have sworn he winked at me in that moment. Or was it just wishful thinking? I got on the bus with Orion right behind me. I assume you mean as we were walking on the bus? I assume you don't mean I'm sitting in a seat and he's sitting right behind me. Uh, so, uh, Lena, do you have any friends? Well, that's an awkward question and a half. Of course I got friends. Uh, you act like it's an easy task. I mean, real friends. Who would call to tell you about the weird guy you met at the park? Orion, you're starting to scare me, all right? This is like you're seeing if anybody's going to look for me if I don't show up. No, one. It's not that like you're that special. There are weird guys at the park all the time. Some live there, in fact. And I, I, I like to think I live there, too. What? And I spend a lot of time there. It's great to observe people at the park. There's so many of them, and they're not in a hurry like they usually are. So you like to watch people a lot? People watching is fun, honestly. Sure, uh, sometimes I mess with them to see their, re their reactions. Like, how do you mess with them? Do you, like, go over there and, like, poke them in the booty hole? Because that would be weird and gross. I don't know why I even thought of that. I'm... I don't... Embarrassed. Moving on. Really? How? And I steal their glasses when they're asleep. What? No, I'm just kidding. Calm down. Everyone's staring. That is not a funny joke. I am sorry. I do not know you well enough to think that's amusing. I looked around and while I couldn't be sure, the few people who were on the bus at that time seemed like they were staring at me. I murmured an apology. I'm always sorry, so I'm in the zoo. And pretended to look out the window. Why are you doing this? Are you some sort of serial killer? I'm not letting you into my house, okay? You know, I don't blame you. Sometimes you play a visual novel and they jump to this point too quickly. That's why I love this author. Uh, she's really good at building to something. Like, enough has been built up character wise where this is a legitimate fucking question at this point. Ah, uh, serial killer, huh? And why would I kill my most favorite thing in the world? Alright, that's even creepier! That's even creepier, dude! You like people that much? Oh, I love them! Oh, I thought you meant us. Uh, I especially like playing with them. And you're something special. Oh my god, Orion. Uh, let me tell you, if you like a special lady or man, go slow. You can always speed it up later on. With no warning, Orion got up and started screaming at the top of his lungs. Ah! Help, help, somebody help me. This girl said she wants to kill me. She's got a gun. I immediately jumped up on my feet, looking around frantically. What? No, it's a joke. He's joking. Don't listen to him. No one seemed to panic, but I still had that feeling that everyone was staring me down. Uh, you okay, miss? Uh, psst. This is your stop. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I pushed past the man who would talk to me, past Orion, and got off the bus. I think maybe we should have waited for the guy who was asking us. I wasn't sure it was the right station until I was already out and the bus was leaving. Confused as to what had just happened, I started walking home. Ah, oh, wait up, wait up! You are not coming into my house, Orion! You seem like a really nice guy. I hope that's a spider necklace. Maybe you're Spider-Man, but I don't know. Leave me alone, you're kind of creeping me out. That was just too funny. You should have seen the look on your face. I saw it. What's wrong with you? You still don't get it, do you? Get what? People walking around me made a wide arc to avoid me. I must look crazy. They can't see me. Check this out. Orion moved towards a nearby man who was sitting on a bench. Hey you! Your face looks like something a kindergartner made in arts class and you smell too! You smell like the poopy farts I made before! I'm gonna call you Poopy Farts McFart Face! Have you considered taking a bath this century? I blinked in confusion. The man on the bench made no other movement than to turn the page of the paper he was reading. 
Oh my word! That means either we got on the bus with a ghost, or we're insane, and we're the one who just screamed for no reason. Oh. Crap. See? I told you. What's happened in here? I started walking away. I want to no part in the strange prank. I just wanted my glasses back and my world to return back to normal. Oh, where are you going? Go away. I'm going home. I was almost home, but Orion was still right behind me. I swear to God, I hope I'm not crazy. Go away. I don't want you following me home. It's not every day that I find someone who can see me, you know? No, no, I don't know. Is that a squirrel? Oh, no, it's part of a tree. I, I took the joke a little too far, huh? Come on, talk to me. Please, I'm really lonely. I just want someone to talk to you. No, you're going to get my passive-aggressive silence. Mm. And I'm not even trying to be a girl. That's what I am in real life. I continue to ignore him. I'm a spirit, okay? Oh, thank God. I'm not crazy. I'm just haunted by a weird ghost. I've been dead for a really long time. That's why no one can see or hear me, but you can. What? Is he lying to me? Could this be real? He's probably just yanking my chain again. My mind was racing. I was both scared and intrigued. Even so, I continued walking home. I, I, I don't talk to people much. The, the only thing I, the only thing I can do for fun is follow people around like I am right now. But usually, they don't know it. I'm just about at my limit. You're setting off my trigger, son. L l listen. No, you listen. I ain't buying any of this. So just leave me alone, okay? This is not Walmart, and I am not gonna purchase this. Uh, how can I prove it to you? Ask me anything. Uh, do you remember Warren G. Harding? <laughs> what Orion was saying was getting to me more than I would have liked to admit. Aw, she's kind. She cares about this guy. I stopped walking and turned to him. Fine, what's your real name? My real name? You don't expect me to believe it's Orion, do you? That's, that's the one thing I can't say. Why, do I get power over your soul if you say it? Why not? I'll promise not to lie about anything else, but I can't tell you my name. That's not suspicious at all. Fine, if you're dead, why are you still here? I chose to be. Why? I wanted to be among the living. It's fun. I always like to be surrounded by people. If they can see me or not, it's, it's irrelevant. How long have you been dead? A long time. Like, longer than five minutes? Too vague. I like her. She's like, son, that is not enough information. I don't even care if you're a ghost. <laughs> She's got an attitude up in the ghost face. If he's a ghost, not a dude just fucking with us. Let's say I've been hanging around the park for some time now. Oh, now I really, I, I really know. I barely remember being a, being alive, to be honest. It, it just seems like a dream sometimes. I, I don't dream anymore, but I think that's a good comparison. Uh, this is just too... I shook my head. Unbelievable? Oh wait, I, that was his line. Unbelievable? I'm gonna need a moment. We took a seat on a rather secluded bench. Not many people passed by, and we could talk undisturbed. No, I'm gonna look crazy like I'm talking to myself. Actually, I sometimes do that in real life when I go to the store, because I don't think about it. I get lost in thought. I'm like Tony the Tiger. What is he doing? Does he have a life outside of Frosted Flakes? Oh no, people are looking at me. Uh, what's it like to be dead then? Uh, what's it like to be alive? I told you, I don't remember anything else. It's just, it's, it's, it's who I am. So are there others? There might be. I, I, I've never seen any. There, there have been some who have seen me, but, but not like this. Glimpses, whispers, that's all I ever was to them, but, but you, you really see me. Not quite, but you better really not have been some bastard who just took my glasses. Because I'm going to be so pissed if you got me to buy your ghost story, and you just took my glasses and you've been fucking with me the whole time. Especially if you know me. So that would be a pretty good way to fuck with your friend. Anyway, how do you pass the time? I told you, I like to mess around with people, spook them. I'm the sudden chill they feel late at night. Are you Darkwing Duck? Uh, walking alone in the park. I hide their keys and untie their shoes. Anything I can do to get a laugh. That's kind of mean. Do you ever leave the park? Yeah, but I always come back. I'm drawn to it. There's a strange energy there. It's like a magnet. Oh. Out of question so soon? No, this is just too strange. I don't know if I can believe this. Uh, what do you have to lose? I get it. You want to go home? Tell you want. If you want to talk to me again, come to the park next Sunday. But how? Uh, we could walk or use the bus, I think, Lena. I'll find you. No worries. Hope to see you again. With a wave! Orion turned around and walked away. That means his name really isn't probably Orion, but... I slowly made my way home. I found my spare glasses and put them on. 
It was strange how I had gotten used to not being able to see anything except blurry shapes and colors. Finally, I could see. Oh, I should get a new pair made soon. I remember Orion's request to come to the park the following week. What should I do? Um, if I say no, I have a very strong feeling the game ends now. I kind of want to say no just to see, but the truth is, I gotta see what's going on at the park. Plus, I'm guessing you, the viewer, if I was watching this right now, I'd be like, you asshole, you better not say no and end the LP. I have nothing to lose if I go. He could have taken advantage of me in my near blind state if he wanted to, but he didn't. His story may seem unbelievable, but I have to know for sure. The following Sunday, I decided to go to the park. Everybody's in the park. Everybody likes the clock. This is the clock song. It's magical. I don't see the middle part. Magical clock. Where have you come from? Oh, God. It looks like it has eyes and a face. See, that's an eye. That's an eye. That's a nose. That's its mouth. And that's its chin. I am the clock lord. Can you tell me what time it is? Shut up. That's the time. It's time for you to shut up. Well, oh, he's rude. I walked around until I found the place where we'd met. Um, hello. Orion, where are you? I'm right here. What do you mean? It's because we, 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 the glasses. They block ghosts. I, I can't see you. Uh, I see you've gotten your vision back. How can you not see me unless... Unless... Take off your glasses. I did as he said. Men always tell me what to do. I mean, that is the character, not me in real life. I can see you now. Well, well, sorta. Strange. Well, anyway, I'm glad you came. I'm not sure why I did, to be honest. As a token of my goodwill, I'll give you something. Look behind that statue. I wonder if he's gonna bear glasses. What's interesting, though, is he probably is a ghost, or he's the world's best magician. I walked to the nearby statue and felt my way around the base. My glasses! You fucking bastard! I figured it'd be weird if people saw those floating around, so I hid them. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I always intended to give them back. I thought you didn't take them! Uh, I might have... I'm gonna lie just a little bit, maybe. It's wrong to steal, don't you know? You're going to hell now! And then the gates of hell opened, and we never saw him again. Uh, what are you gonna do, have me arrested? Yeah, I'm calling the ghost police. Ghostbusters. Ugh. Damn you and your logic, fair enough. Give me one reason not to leave and never come back. Ah, uh, you're curious. Simple as that. You being here proves it. Uh, I can't argue with that reasoning. He may be a ghost, but he's very solid with his logic. Logic ghost. Do you know Ghost Rider, that TV show from the 90s? Are you friends with him? I don't like you very much right now. People usually don't. Wait, wait, you lied to me and stole my glasses. Don't play the fucking pity card. Have you ever thought of changing your ways and doing something good for the world? Yeah, do some community service, Ghost. Ah, uh, what's the fun in that? Whoa, I shake my head. You said you chose to be here. What exactly was the alternative? No idea. What? Let's not talk about that. It's such a beautiful day. Let's go do some damage. Seriously, bro? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what kind of... What? I never had a partner before. Let's lift some wallets and lure away a family pet, or... Are you crazy? I'm not doing any of that. That's mean. Plus, you know who goes to jail, Mr. Ghost Man? I go to jail. I'm the one who goes to jail, and all the other girl inmates are going to be touching up my girly parts. All right, come on. I'll come up with something a little more friendly, okay? No. I'm sticking to my guns. It is not, no. Messing with people like that is just wrong. It is unfair. They can't see you. See, look, they're already... Well, I guess they're star-crossed lovers. I'm moving them a little fast in that direction. But she's like, I'm going to do what's right. And he's the troublemaker. And uh, what am I supposed to do then? Can't we just go somewhere and talk or something? I can't see too well without my glasses, you know. Uh, that's not nearly as fun. But there's so much I want to know. All right, what do you want to talk about? We sat down on the bench. Hopefully no one could hear us. Me. I'm gonna look totally insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Insane? Got no brain. What? Uh, do you ever get lonely? I think he gets nothing but that. Um. Was I too nosy? No, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't like to think about that. Uh, about it. Uh, this is life now, if you can call it that. This is my everyday. Sometimes I get my hands on a book and I read or build sandcastles at night in the sandbox. 
when I finish destroying the kids. I assume you mean the kids sandbox and not the kids. Typical. You know, I, I don't see my reflection. Oh, you're a vampire ghost. From what I can tell, you're a rather colorful individual. Oh, uh, maybe. I, I don't even look at myself anymore. I might just be a representation of me. What? Aren't we all? Do you think that uh, I'll be like you one day? Mom? You got awfully quiet. I, I hope not. Listen, if you get a choice, just don't do what I did, okay? Just go. Go where? You'll know. I don't remember that day. I remember just needing to go there. I, I don't know where that place was, but I knew it would take me somewhere different, and I was scared, so I stayed. I stayed, and now I regret it. Can they give you another chance? They... I, I wish I knew who that was. Uh, there, there's no authorities we can call? It's not like the Grim Fandango? I, I would die for another chance, huh? Liter literally. I wish I could help you somehow. Just come visit me sometimes. It would mean a lot. Um, we did today. I will, I promise. Lena, you're awesome. I like you. Goodbye. For the next couple of weeks, I went to the park every few days and kept Orion company. Sometimes we would venture outside of the park, but not very often. It was difficult to maintain a conversation with a lot of people be by, be by, be by, nearby. <laughs> I sometimes put my earphones on to pretend I was talking on the phone. We agreed to meet one day at a nearby cafe. Is it like a date? I felt bad for eating in front of Orion, but he assured me it was no promise and no problem, and promised me a free dessert. I wondered how he would pull that off. Um, that's bad news. He's going to steal it, you know, because there's no way on earth he can pay for it. I left for the cafe early in the morning. I was a bit sleepy, but nothing like a little coffee. Uh, nothing a little coffee you couldn't fix. As I was waiting at a red light, I thought I saw something flicker in the distance. Is that him? Is that Orion? I had barely seen a figure, but I knew without a doubt it was him. He was walking into traffic. It's all right, he's a ghost. Without realizing I was running towards him. No, I don't want to die. But then the scene changed. A woman ran after a child, pulling him back. It wasn't Orion at all. It was too late when I saw the coming car the car coming from my left. No! It all happened in a flash. My world went black. I can't be sure how long it stayed that way. From time to time I could hear echoes, voices from far away. It was like a deep sleep. I wasn't sure if any of it was real. Was I sleeping? Where where am I? What happened? I rem I remember being hit by a car, and I remember Orion Orion. He was there. Somewhere behind me, I could see my own body, eyes closed. Oh, I wore that today. Oh, I regret it. Am I dead? I wanted to go back to where my body was. I couldn't die. I refused to die. At the same time, something was beckoning. Something I couldn't see. Was that what Orion was talking about? I didn't want to go, but if I stayed, would I be like him, invisible for eternity? Is this all there is to it? Or uh, Orion! I don't know what possessed me to call out his name for what I knew. It was most likely not his real name. What was he to me? A friend? I talked about other things with him I never would have dared to talk about with my other friends. Or Orion! If only, if only he was here! Lena? Oh. Oh, hi, Orion. Oh, hi. Orion! And it's too soon for you to go. Why did this happen to you? It's because you asked me out to coffee. It's really your fault. Ha <laughs> ha! Not really. Guilt trip. Orion, why, why did this have to happen? Is this it? Do I have to go? Uh, I don't want you to go, but don't be like me, Lena. I can stay. I'll, I'll stay with you. I'll go back. I walked to my peacefully sleeping body. No, don't, don't. I don't want to leave you. You'll hate me if you stay. And more importantly, you'll hate yourself. I wish it didn't have to be this way. I saw you. I saw you running across the street. I don't, I don't know what it was I was thinking. I started running, and then the car hit me. Um, a car? A, a, a car? That's how I died. A, a car hit me. Now, now I remember. And that's how I died. How ironic. Maybe I saw a glimpse from the past. I've seen stranger things. Huh? This, this, this is all my fault. You were distracted because of me. I didn't... I didn't see a need to blame anybody. We're both dead here. What's going to change anything? It was my own fault for not being aware of my surroundings. Orion was not convinced. How did you even get here? This, What is this place anyway? 
He was lost in thought for a moment. Where are you? I can't see you. You're lost in the thought. I heard someone call my name and I was gone. My, my name. He smiled bitterly. Was your name? Oh, I got hit by a car. You should go now while well, you can. I'll, I'll go. Good, I'm glad you chose that. I didn't choose anything. Will, will you be okay? I was always okay. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Orion, I'll miss you. Thank you. For what? For getting you killed? It was my time to go. Don't blame yourself. Lena, you're amazing. Are you single? Oh, wait. You died. Sorry. How can I not blame myself? I would have expected to fear, feel anger and resentment for dying so young and in such a stupid accident. But all I felt was a strange feeling of acceptance. I'm sure my family will miss me, and I'll miss them too. I really wish I didn't cause them any pain, but I, I'm not upset. I have a feeling this isn't the end. The pull was getting stronger. I, I had to go soon. I grabbed Orion's hand, something I'd never done before. Why don't you come with me, Orion? You're the strongest person I've ever met. Don't lose that. Make someone smile like we did that day together. He was surprised for a moment, then he smiled. I will. Now go. I, I, I hesitantly let go of his hand. I moved with the current that was pulling me forward. It felt so natural, I gently drifted away. Not before football season's ending. I want to watch the end. For a long time, I felt nothing, heard nothing, saw nothing. Only peace. Then came the voices. Where am I? There, there, don't be afraid. I'm not dead. Oh, no, we wouldn't let that happen. I was saved. I was saved after all. The operation had been a success and I had lived. And now I can sue the car driver. I had still had to be in the hospital for a few weeks, but that was fine. <sighs> While I was talking to Orion, I felt I was okay with my life ending. But now I was happy I got a second chance. A few like, weeks later, when I could finally walk again on my own, I went to the park. I went to visit the park, even. I hoped I would see Orion there. I even took off my glasses for a while. But I never found him. Maybe he was, maybe he was hiding from me. Or maybe he'd finally found peace somewhere, somehow. I hope from the bottom of my heart it was the latter. He led me to the light and he helped me make the right choice. I am eternally grateful for meeting him. Oh, Orion, I miss you. Thank you. Ending number five. Grateful. That was actually really sweet and romantic and a kind of cute ending. Obviously, by the number five, you can tell there are multiple endings. If you would like to try one of the other endings, um, there will be a link in the description. You can play it yourself. God, I love this author's work. I love these visual novels. I had so much fun with um, Summer Found Me and Out of Sight was out of sight. Oh, why did I end it on that note? I ruined everything. Thanks for watching so much. I had a blast, and I'll see you all in the next LP.